The Soul's Prayer by Sarojini Naidu Sarojini Naidu, also known as the Nightingale of India, was an Indian freedom fighter and poetess. She was the first woman to become the governor of an Indian state, that is Agra, from 1947 to 1949. She was born in the year 1879 and died in the year 1949 at the age of 70. The poem is an imaginary conversation between the poetess and God. It is a prayer that she offers to God, asking Him to reveal to her the meaning and mysteries of life and death. The innocent soul of the poetess prays to God to grant her to experience not only the good things or happiness in life, but also for pain and sorrows of life. The poem can be divided into two parts. The first three stanzas deals with her request to God, and the remaining stanzas deals with how God responds to her request. In childhood's pride I said to thee, O thou who madest me of thy breath, speak, Master, and reveal to me thine inmost laws of life and dead. In the opening lines, the poetess is very, very curious. Her innocent mind is curious to know the meaning of life and dead. So she asks God, she says, as innocent as a child, or in the childhood state of innocence, I am asking you, O God, who created me out of your own breath. She says, Speak, Lord, or speak, Master, and reveal or show to me the mysteries and the laws of life and death. The poetess wants God to show her the real meaning of life and death. Give me to drink each joy and pain which thine eternal hand can meet. For my insatiated soul would drain earth's at most bitter, at most sweet. In the second stanza, she asks God to give her not only joy but also pain. She says, Give me the opportunity to experience happiness as well as sadness, which only you, which only God can give. For my insatiated or for my unsatisfied soul, would like to drain, would like to take away or experience earth's bitter and sweet moments. She says, My soul will remain unsatisfied unless I experience the good as well as the bad things in life. Spare me no bliss, no pang of strife. Withhold no gift or grief I crave. The intricate lore of love and life and mystic knowledge of the grave. She further asks God in this stanza to not spare her or not prevent her from being happy. She wants to be happy. Of course she wants to be happy. But this is not the end. The poet has asked God not to spare her from any joy or pain. She not only prays for extreme happiness, but also asks God to let her suffer hardships to experience pain and sorrows. She craves or she longs to know the intricate knowledge of love and life. And she also wants to know the strange knowledge of the grave. She wants to know what happens beyond the grave. Lord, thou didst answer stern and low. Child, I will hearken to thy prayer, and thy unconquered soul shall know all passionate rapture and despair. In this stanza, God answers to her prayer. He answers her in a stern, in a strict and humble manner. God promises to grant her request. He says, I will surely listen to your prayer. I will hearken to thy prayer. And her unconquered or innocent soul will experience great joy and sadness. Here he uses the word rapture and despair. So as per her request and desire, God assures to make her experience great deal of joy and sadness.
Thou shalt drink deep of joy and fame, and love shall burn thee like a fire, and pain shall cleanse thee like a flame, to purge the dross from thy desire. God further says that she will enjoy joy and fame. She will also experience love which will consume her like a fire. She will be showered with love by people around her. Sarojini Naidu will also experience pain, and this pain and suffering that she experiences will purify or will purge the dross or impurity from her desire. So the pain that she experiences will act like a cleansing agent to her soul. So shall thy chastened spirit yearn to seek from its blind prayer release, and spend and pardon so to learn the simple secret of my peace. The prayer made by the poetess was immature. She now realizes her pride and immaturity. So she asks God to forgive her, to pardon her for making such blind prayer, or foolish prayer. God pardons her, He forgave her, and explains to her the simple secret of His peace. I, bending from my sevenfold height, will teach thee of my quickening grace. Life is a prism of my light and death the shadow of my face. In the last stanza, God explains to her the real meaning of life and death, and also grants her peace. God said, I will bend down from my level, I will bend down from my sevenfold height, and share with you the simple secret of my peace. God is willing to bend down from his level and teach the poetess his life-giving grace, or his quickening grace. The ending couplet summarizes what life and death is. God compares life to a prism through which his light passes through. Life is like a prism through which God's action passes through to produce different colors of life, like joys, sorrows, love, happiness, hardships, pain, etc. And death, what is death? Death is the shadow that follows light. Death is the shadow of God's face. We cannot escape death. So God answers to Sarojini Naidu's question by telling her that both life and death is a reflection of God's power. Both life and death comes from God.